how are you today? Well, it won't surprise you that after adding fractions, we're going to be subtracting them. Lucky for us, the rules aren't really going to change. You already know things about how subtraction and addition are related. It doesn't matter if we have positive numbers or negative numbers. We know that when you're subtracting an amount, it's exactly the same as adding the opposite of that amount. For example, if we were up here, um, 3 minus negative 6, you already know that that's the same as 3 plus a positive 6, and the answer is 9. So, I digress a little bit. Let's erase that. Since subtracting is exactly the same as adding the opposite of the amount, then the rules for subtracting are the same as the rules for addition. We need the same things. Just like before, if it's necessary, let's rewrite the fractions so that they have a common denominator. You probably already knew that's what it went in this blank. When we were adding, we added the numerators and kept the same denominator. When we're subtracting, we will subtract the numerators and keep the same denominator. So since there's really nothing new, let's just dive right in and find our first example. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. With regular subtraction, we often have to borrow. And this is true for subtracting fractions as well. With regular addition, sometimes we have to carry. With fractions, the carrying happened when we ended up with an improper fraction in our result, and we had to rewrite that as a mixed number. So let's start by looking at some fractions and some subtracting where we don't have to borrow and just get used to the rules again. Here we have negative 6 37ths subtract 20 37ths. And we know the rules say we are going to subtract the numerators. So we have negative 6 minus 20 and keep the same denominator. 37. Just to uh, remember that idea about subtracting being the same as adding the opposite, let's rewrite this numerator. Negative 6 plus a negative 20. And of course the denominator is still 37. Okay, so we've got that bowl. We have 6 negatives in the bowl, adding 20 more negatives to the bowl. That gives us negative 26. And of course, the denominator is still 37. So there's our answer, negative 26 37 And really, it's just about that easy. Um, so let's take a look at example two. Now we have 25 36 and we'd like to subtract 5 9 Here, the only thing we have to worry about is getting a common denominator what common denominator should we use? Well, these are kind of small numbers. Let's take the largest one, 36, and ask ourselves, does 9 go into 36? And it does. 9 goes into 36 four times. So in this case, the common denominator is going to be 36. So let's write that down. Whenever I have mixed numbers or fractions that need to be rewritten with common denominators, I really like to write the problem vertically. So let's see here, 25 36 subtract 5 ninths, and we need to rewrite this bottom fraction by multiplying it by 4 over 4. And of course that's going to turn into subtracting, let's see, 5 times 4 is 20, and the denominator 9 times 4 is 36. This fraction up here on the top, I don't have to change it at all, so let's just drag it over here to the right hand side. Now we have 25 36ths, and we're subtracting 20 36ths. 
Well, that's pretty easy. 25 minus 20 is just 5. And of course, the denominator stays the same. And there we go. There is our answer. Just to make sure that your calculator skills are still up to snuff, let's give this a try on our calculator. These are both proper fractions. So let's see. I'll use the fraction key. 25 over 36. And let's subtract a fraction 5 over 9. There we go, 5 36ths, and life is pretty wonderful. Okay, so when we don't have to borrow, it's really not that bad. Let's check out the case where we do have to borrow. We'll start with a nice easy one that we can put a picture to. So let's say we have the problem 3 and 1 fourth minus 1 and 3 fourths. I like this problem because we can think about money and talk about fourths as quarters. Okay, so let's see what the problem is, and we'll start just by writing this vertically, just because that's the way I like it. Three and one-fourth, and we'd like to subtract one and three-fourths. Okay, so as always, we have to start on the right-hand side. Don't get carried away with the whole numbers before you deal with the fractions. Just because you like the whole numbers better doesn't mean you get to do them first. I'm going to start way over here on the right-hand side. I have one-fourth, and I need to subtract three-fourths, and that's a problem. All right, we can't subtract. Three-fourths from one-fourth. Three-fourths is just too big. We will need to borrow. And borrowing with fractions is a little bit different than borrowing whole numbers. So let's divide this a little bit and think about what happens with the whole numbers. Let's suppose we were looking at 52 and we wanted to subtract 17. All right, so I have 2 minus 7, and I can't do that. So we always borrow one from the 5. But that's a 10 that we borrow from the 5. So we take that 10 and we turn it into 1s. And those 10 1s combine with the 2 1s and give us 12 1s. And now we can subtract just fine. 12 minus 7 is 5, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So the key to borrowing with fractions is that when we borrow 1, we have to turn it into something that's got fractions in it. And we have to say how many pieces are there. Here, there were 10 pieces that made up the ones, but the denominator tells us how many parts are in the whole, so we really have to pay attention to that. Let's try a picture so I can show you what I mean. So here's our picture representation of three and one quarter. We owe somebody one and three quarters, so really what we'd like to do is cross off one and then cross off three quarters, but we can't do that. We can't give away three quarters if we don't have three quarters. So what we're going to do is break up one of these dollar bills into quarters. So there's a quarter here, and a quarter here, and a quarter here, and a quarter here. So we haven't done anything except change what the situation looks like. Instead of three and one quarter. Now what we're looking at is two and five quarters. So before we were trying to subtract one and three quarters and we couldn't do it. But now that the problem is rewritten, we can subtract one and three quarters without any trouble at all. Five quarters minus three quarters will give us two quarters. 2 minus 1 will give us 1. And if we look back up here at our picture and say, okay, I'm starting off with 3 and a quarter, and I want to subtract off 1, so subtract it off, there it is, and I also want to subtract off 1, 2, 
three of those quarters. What's left over? Right here. One and two quarters. And of course, you know that we can rewrite that as one and a half. So let's check out this borrowing here. The whole idea was to borrow one of the whole numbers. So we wanted to, here, we borrowed one from the three. And then we combined it So we're going to combine that one with the fraction. So if we wrote this out in long form, let's see. Let's try a different color here. Let's try black, I suppose. this is what's happening. We started off with three and one quarter. We took one away from the whole number and that left us with two and then we combined that one with the fraction. We couldn't do anything with it over here the way it's written so we wrote this one and one fourth as an improper fraction. So the 2 stayed the same, but now I've got 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 more gives me 5. And that's pretty much the process that we're going to use when we start to borrow. That's what makes the subtraction possible. Okay, let's check this out on your calculator. Make sure we can still do that. Um, here we have some mixed numbers. Remember that's written on your calculator, so we'll access that with the second key. So we have second and then push the fraction button. Three and one-fourth. Use those arrow keys to fill in the template. Subtract. One. Oops, that's not going to work. Delete. Subtract the mixed number. There we go. One and three-fourths. out of the fraction and see what we have. Ah, yep, we don't want that. That's improper. So use that fraction converter key. And there we go, one and one half. Okay, so let's try this again with some more examples that are just maybe a little uh, beefier and flip the page. Just to get us in the groove of things, let's try one where we have common denominators already. All right, so you know that I like these things written vertically. I don't know, it just helps me stay organized. 17 and 2 fifteenths. We'd like to subtract 3 and 11 fifteenths. All right, so we're going to do this the long way, just so that you can see all the steps. So I have 2 fifteenths, I'd like to subtract 11 fifteenths. That's not going to work. We need to borrow. So what we have to do is take 1 away from the whole number. So 17 becomes 16. And that 1 that we borrowed is going to combine with the fraction. So we have 1 and 2 fifteenths. Okay, so the 16 is going to stay there. But this 1 and 2 fifteenths we're going to write as an improper fraction. So 15 times 1 is 15, plus 2 more is 17. And that's what we have. Now down here on the bottom, we're just going to drag this over to the right-hand side. Subtract 3 and 11 fifteenths. There. Now, see, we can do the subtraction just fine. 17 minus 11, well, that would be 6. And of course, we keep the denominator the same. That would be 6 fifteenths. 16 minus 3, that's 13. Not a problem there. Look at the answer. Check and see if we need to simplify anything. The fraction is proper, so that's good. But it's not in lowest terms. And I'm running out of paper here on the right-hand side, so I'm just going to come over here to the left and clean it up some more.
So we have 13 and 6 fifteenths. And we know that the numerator is divisible by 3, so that's 3 times 2. And the denominator is divisible by 3, that's 3 times 5. And certainly 3 over 3 gives us 1, which means that what we really have is 13 and 2 fifths. Ta-da! There we go. And of course, you can try and check these things on your calculator. Again, we want to become proficient with both tools, your brain and your calculator. Make sure they're both working well together. Okay, last example. Forty-two and five-twelfths subtract seventeen and seven-ninths. Forty-two and five-twelfths subtract seventeen and seven-ninths. All right, so right away we see that we need a common denominator. And um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So let's go back to that process we had before of looking at some prime factorizations. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. So this is 2 times 2 times 3. And of course, 9 is 3 times 3. So my common denominator needs everything for 9 and everything we need for 12. Well, 12 needs a 3, and I've already got that. But it also needs two 2's, so I'd better put those in as factors. And when I multiply that out, now I have 9 times 4, which is 36. Which I probably could have figured out if I'd wanted to, but it seemed too hard at the time, so I didn't. There we go. That was good rehearsal practice for us. Okay, so common denominator is going to be 36. So let's rewrite this. 12 times uh, 3 is 36. So we'll multiply the numerator and denominator by 3 over 3. 9 times 4 is 36. So the bottom fraction will multiply the numerator and denominator by 4 over 4. So the top fraction becomes 42 and 15 36 the bottom fraction, we're now subtracting 17 and 28 thirty-sixths. Oh, there's that problem again. We can't take 28 away from 15. We're going to need to borrow. And I'm running out of space on the right, so I'm just going to bring it down here. So we have 42 and 15 thirty-sixths. We are subtracting 17 and 28 36 and I'm just going to get this out of the way so we don't get it mixed up with our work okay so the job was to borrow we need to borrow one from the 42 if I take one away from the 42 I have 41 and the one that I borrowed needs to combine with the fraction So the 41 as a whole number stays, but the fraction is now 36 times 1 is 36, plus 15 is 51. Bottom fraction, that's just going to drag over here to the right. So now what we're doing is subtracting 17 and 28 36. And we can do that. 51 minus 28 is 23. Keep the denominator the same. 41 minus 17 is 24. Okay, so what I'm going to challenge you to do is to pause the recording. Actually, we're just going to stop here in a second. But rewrite this problem on a separate piece of paper. Don't look at your notes in here. Flip them over and try this one again. Practice this idea of taking one away from the whole number and combining the one with the fraction. See if you can come up with the same answer twice. All right, good luck with your homework, and we'll talk to you later.
拜拜。